<laughs> hey guys, Scott here. I've got some videos that I'm working on right now, uploading, and I've got this beautiful evening light and light rain. It's perfect for standing outside, and I just felt like using this light because it was great. I liked how the last video looked, so I'm like, ooh, before the sun goes down, I kind of want to grab this. It's completely cloudy, super gray, and drizzling on me. So I'm just taking this opportunity to give another extra video. So first of all, you're going to be getting this on Thursday morning. Today is live stream day, so our expectation is that, one, I'm going to be super busy this morning, so if you don't see me online, that's to be expected. I'm supposed to be being interviewed by the Immigration Department about Migración, about my residence this morning. So if all goes to plan, I will be dealing with that all morning and won't be online. Hopefully that all goes well and I will be a an official Nicaraguan long-term resident very soon. And this afternoon, of course, is live stream day. So prepare for an evening live stream. We're not going to go crazy on it today. We're not going to start super early because I'm busy and we're not going to go super crazy late because I do have to see my kids from time to time. But today is live stream day. So get your questions ready. Do all that stuff and get ready for that. But Right now, I want to talk about this thing that I've discovered recently. In the last few weeks, I've been talking to some people who do relocation advice and, and discovery, kind of like I do, and uh, we've come across a couple different players who offer some kind of relocation conferences, relocation retreats, things like that. And I'm trying to imagine, so I'm just kind of having a conversation with you guys. We can talk about it on the live stream this evening. So get those questions ready, get your comments ready, get your ideas ready for the show tonight. I want, I want to have a lot of conversations, so one, Plan for it, get on there, and two, bring your questions. And we have a lot of fun on the live stream. Like, we go a long time, grab a beer, have a snack ready, hop on, have questions ready. You can put it on the TV, you can ask questions on your phone. There's a lot of things you can do. We have a really good audience, it really is fun, but we could get a lot more of you. So, plan for it, get your family on there, get everybody to sign on, make sure you like and do all that stuff. And uh, just look forward, it'll be here on the channel. We start generally around six o'clock. Central time, that's what I say sometimes earlier, often a little bit later, but not too far late. Uh, so that is about 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock uh, American Central, uh, which is, and then 6 o'clock Mountain U.S., which is Central American time right now, and then 5 o'clock on the Pacific. But we do go for several hours, but if you can get in there, it's a fun time. You can talk to each other in the chat if you're on a TV or whatever, check your phone. Okay, so that stuff. So we've been talking about these things, these relocation retreats, and trying to come up with like, why would people go to this? What is going on that's driving people to consider such a thing? And every time that someone has it, when we watch the videos, when you watch the channel that's, that's advertising this stuff, they always feel a little bit creepy or greasy, like at best, like used car salesman and at worst threatening, right? Like it's doesn't come, the, the channels don't come across well. And I actually mentioned this. Some of you may have seen the short that I put up that said WTF is a relocation retreat. And immediately someone reached out to me, sent me a photo of the person I had been thinking of when I made the video. Cause I, I saw this video where they, they tried to sell this retreat thing. And I'm like, what is, who would do this? And who would do this with this person who's so creepy? Like this guy seems scary. Like he actually seems like he might punch you in the face if you tried to talk to him so like he gives like this really aggressive angry vibe and uh, he probably has some good advice he's been doing this relocation stuff for a long time but did not have a good positive energy by any any means so i'm like why would people want to go hang out with this person like honestly i don't feel like i'd feel safe with them i don't want to you know that's i'm not gonna say who it is because that's that's quite a stretch but just the vibe you get and i sent it to my my um ceo and she looked at it and she's like "Ooh, nothing he's saying is particularly wrong but the vibe it's something's wrong and i'm like right that's how i was feeling and then other people said the same thing and then his picture was sent to me in reference to this thing and they're like this guy you know, like started, and and like had had a direct interaction where he was like super crazy uh, scary and like you wouldn't want to be around him and i'm like whoa that's real so it's funny that this came up and people made that connection but the whole idea uh, ignoring the specifics of some creepy people who might be doing it. Maybe they're lovely people in person and just come across terrible on video, right? Uh, but uh, the whole idea of paying to attend a retreat so you can hang out with other people who've moved or are considering moving, I find extremely strange. And I can't think of any other aspect of life where you would do something like this. It's kind of like going to a uh, vacation support group, right? Oh, we're going to Disney World this summer. I hope to get together with other people who've been to Disney World and pay them 
to get up and talk about Disney World, and I'm going to hang out with other people who are thinking about going to Disney World, and we can kick around ideas about which rides we want to do. What? That seems super weird, and that's way better than this. So everyone relocates for their own reasons, so hanging out with other people who are going to relocate doesn't have very much value. If anything, I would say it's probably misleading, because they're going to be like really worried about things you don't care about and completely oblivious to things that matter to you. Their factors are going to be totally different. It's probably not super useful. I'm not saying it's never useful, but it's probably not great. And people who have relocated are not good resources for relocation in most cases. Cases. It's relatively rare that someone who has relocated has additional information that's good for you. Their experiences are going to be very different than yours, just in general. Now, that's not to say that you don't need someone to hold your hand and help you through the process of relocation. That could be the case. That's not me. I don't sell services like that because I don't want to be lumped in with these crazy people. The problem is, is that most people who would sell you services about relocation aren't people you would want to be associating with and could get you in a lot of trouble or you could end up in a lot of trouble by working with them. So you're in a really dangerous position. It's not a good spot where you want to be reaching out to salesy people and having them put you in a position of being introduced to more salesy people. It's just a bad loop, right? So the idea, I guess, of a retreat is you're going to go and hang out with a bunch of people who are super lost but feel they want to relocate but don't know where to start. That's fine, but the people who are going to tend to put on a retreat for that are probably going to be people who see dollar signs. You are the wallet that they are ready to empty. They're just looking for your back pocket and wondering what they can get. I'm not saying 100% of the time, but this is the obvious situation, right? So you expect that they're going to bring relocation resources in, right? You're going to find that they're going to bring, well, I'm going to bring a lawyer who's going to talk to you about the legalities of stuff. Okay, is he selling services? Well, yeah, and I'm gonna bring in a transport guy, and I'm gonna bring in a real estate guy, and I'm gonna bring in a whole bunch of things you shouldn't be really worried about up front, right? Now, there's times, I get it, you're gonna be moving to a new country, and it's good to have some information about residency and, and citizenship and that stuff before you get too far along and then find out it's not what you're looking for or it's a problem, so I get it. But going to a retreat and having a lawyer who's trying to sell you something where everybody there is on the same page of they've all got to get you hooked and they've all got to get you into their, their services with each other, they're obviously there to make much higher cost. So they have a very strong incentive to gringo price you. These are the gringo pricers, right? This is how you end up paying twice. 10 times what things should actually cost, not just because you pay too much for the service, but you may be sold services that you don't need or that don't actually do anything, right? It's very easy to end up in a situation where someone's like, oh, you got to have a lawyer do this for you. And the lawyer charges you a reasonable amount, $1,000 to take care of this paperwork for you. You're like, oh, that wasn't bad, only $1,000. And you ask someone, is $1,000 a lot for this? And they say, no, maybe you could get it for 900, but a thousand isn't bad. And you're like, awesome. You didn't ask the right question. The question is, do I need to do this? Oh, no, you don't need to do that. That's not a thing you need. Oh, but if you do want it, $1,000 isn't a terrible price. You haven't been ripped off too much. You paid too much, but it's not that much. Oh, I just lost $1,000, right? And I've talked to people who've had exactly this happen, right? Huge amounts of money lost because a lawyer got to charge them for something that was free. Right. So was the amount that they paid outrageous? No, not if a lawyer did the work for them. They couldn't, turned out not to be a lawyer, and it was all free had they done it themselves. And they have to do it themselves. What the lawyer did wasn't, the fake lawyer did, wasn't actually legal. So it actually brought in a lot of problems. But the idea is there, right? That you don't want salespeople who have you in a, in a safety bubble where you're one, feeling vulnerable in general, but then you feel like you're scared out there, but you're safe in here. Now you're gonna be very trusting of these people and they know that there's no way for you to verify anything that they say. And they're all working together. Not always, of course, but this is the assumption. This is what you have to be assuming. These people will all be working together to mislead you. They're all making their money from the same process together. And one of them, you know, you may not go with all these people for things, but they make their money by working together and getting you into this group of services 
There's so much money to be made off of people who are unsure of how to relocate. Now, depending on where you go, you need different information. If you're coming here to Nicaragua, this channel has a lot of information, and it's 100% free. We never charge, right? If you need some one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, you want to talk to me on the phone? Yes, you got to buy me a number of coffees. You, get, you know, we do a dozen coffees for an hour. That's our current going rate, and then I'm happy to have a private conversation with you. That's fine. Right. But everything I say privately, I also say publicly. I'm not keeping anything back. The only time that I do some things privately is some people feel more comfortable having some direct one on one time. We sit down, we talk, and we're able to walk through things. I totally understand why some people want that. And I don't want to leave people without that option. So, yeah, we do that. That's it. Everything I say is public. We're not hiding any information. Everything you need to make the decisions on your own. You can watch my channel and get that information. And there's other people like me providing that information. Not a ton, but they're out there. And you can get it. As long as they're not real estate salespeople, you're generally okay. If you're looking at going to another country, right, then you have a little bit of, you got to find a channel like mine in that country. But they're out there normally. Maybe not Costa Rica. We haven't found one yet. If anyone knows of one, let me know. But let me tell you, if it's the one we did, before you send it to me, Watch it critically for a few seconds and say, is this someone that I feel like I could trust or is this a scary, creepy person who looks like they're trying to sell something, right? Just take that moment because people always send me the creepiest people. I'm like, this guy's okay, right? You're like, no, what? Where did you get that from? Ah, <laughs> you need to have stronger alert systems built in to uh, salespeople, I think. It's, it's a tough thing, right? Sales works because people don't, don't realize they're being sold. Right? If it didn't do that, then it wouldn't be an effective tool. So that's, yeah, most people do have good feelings about salespeople who are out to take advantage of them. So, so that's okay. But do take a moment and think, huh, should I send this to Scott? Is this someone that I feel like I'd want to have coffee with and would have a good time? They're actually trying to give me good information or are they just trying to convince me to do something that will lead to someone they know making money? Hmm. Eh. So, I'd love to I'd love to find a great resource for Costa Rica. I'd love to find a great one for Honduras and so forth so that we can at least link and be like, hey, guys, you're, you know, you're checking out Nicaragua while you're here and you're going to see Costa Rica. Maybe you're, you're going to see both. Here's a great channel to learn about all the things you need over there. Right. Perfect. Um, so so those resources are out there. And then there's people. I do a tiny bit of this and like generic expats does this and um, Nearshore Nomad, uh, Nearshore uh, Living does this. Right. Talk about like the big context of how do you decide on a place to go? How do you find the country, right? Narrow down the country, then you got to find a channel in that country that can give you the details for that specific country, right? That kind of stuff, put that together and you can have a great framework of the information that you need and you don't need to, to look for these hand holdings, right? So, so it's fine to want someone to hold your hand. If you have a friend who's a good uh, expat and they're smart and they've done all these things and they can introduce you to people that they re you really can trust because of them, and be careful because loads of expats can be nice people, but they may not know how to trust people. It's really well known here constantly. The worst people to go to are the expats who've been here because they've often been being taken advantage of for year after year after year, and they don't realize it, and they keep get, being used as references by other people to be taken advantage of as well. So you need to be careful, not because they're not well-meaning, but because they're not well-equipped to evaluate, right? So be careful about that. That's a real problem. But, um, you know, coming into the country and doing a little bit of footwork, I know that that's not fun, but it, it really will give you better results than than panicking and feeling you need someone to guide you and saying, I know, but I need, right? Once you start saying that, but I know, I, uh, you're going to make a horrible decision. And the very thing you're trying to protect yourself from, you're going to go straight into the, what are you afraid of in relocation, right? What's the thing that's going to go wrong? In most cases, there's very little to go wrong. That's maybe overstating the case. It can become annoying when you relocate. There are things that can go wrong. And we should talk about that in more videos for sure, but the degree to which things go wrong is generally not that bad, as long as you're not like a criminal. We always have to say that, right? People are always like, but I broke the law and now things went wrong. And you're like, yes, why did I have to warn people about that? Okay, but in general, as long as you're not doing something wrong, as you're trying to be a good expat, 
most countries are going to work with you. Most countries are going to give you paths to do the things you need to do. Yes, it may be frustrating. Yes, there may be money involved. Yes, it may not be as simple and happy and whatever as you were hoping it was going to be, and that's okay. And that's unfortunate that it's like that, but that you got to plan for some amount of that. But generally, those worst case scenarios aren't too bad. You're moving to Europe, you're moving to Latin America, you're moving to just about anywhere. And like the worst thing is like, ah, oh, I had to do a bunch of paperwork and the language barrier is annoying. That's often how bad it is, right? It's really rare that people are moving to a new country as expats. If you're going to like the United States and you're going there because you're an asylum seeker or a refugee and you're trying to find work and start a new life because things are terrible, yeah, it may not be a fun time, but you're also escaping something terrible that allows you to claim for, call for asylum, right? It's a, it's still better than where you were. It's still an improvement. Don't be afraid of it. Go make what you need to have happen, happen. But if you are uh, moving to a country because it's the place you want to live, you want to be an expat, you want to do this, this lifestyle and what mine or something similar or whatever, you really shouldn't have these feelings of fear and panic because what's the worst case? Oh, we did it for a while and oh, we, things were not what we planned. We got to move on to another country. It's unfortunate. Not a big deal. It honestly isn't. And that's you got internalized that the failures aren't that bad of failures. But if you're not careful, the one thing that can go horribly wrong is getting sucked into these, these people who do these schemes. They're targeting expats and they're trying to figure out how to siphon your money off or worse, right? And this is where you need to be afraid because they're in a position to get your confidence and to learn about you. And once that happens, this is when your bank accounts get emptied. This is when um, you, you end up losing huge amounts of money, things that would never happen from the normal relocation process. And this isn't relocation, right? This is getting swindled. I'm not saying that every person offering relocation assistance is out there to swindle you. I'm saying that it is a really, really easy con for someone to play, a really easy hustle is looking for people looking to relocate and offering them paid services. Now there's there's very clear paid services. Okay, I would like you to, you know, transport me from point A to point B. Okay, if the, if the cost you're spending is for that transit is good, then you're good. I would like a tour. I'd like to be shown something. Okay, as long as you're actually being shown those things, is all you you're good, right? It's the oh, I'm paying for uh, uh you know uh, service that's going to, especially an undefined service. So many of these retreats, so many of these services are like, oh, we help you relocate. What do you mean help me? What exactly do you provide? Oh, we do all the hard stuff. What hard stuff? What am I actually paying for? And what do I not get that I need to do myself, right? Are these things actually written down or is it like, just pay us a bunch of money and we'll make things easier? Will you? Or will you make it hard because you're the actual barrier? Is the system actually hard to begin with? What are we solving? Right? Just be really wary. When, when these things like retreats come up, the fact that these exist, that someone finds it valuable enough to, to host a retreat like this, and there's enough people going that they're making money from this, really scares me about humanity. Right? Like, I, What scenario makes people say, here's the thing I want to spend my money on instead of any number of better things. Like if you're going to go do this in Honduras, I'm just making up a country. You're going to go to Honduras and go to a relocation retreat. What's that going to cost you? $500, $5,000, $50,000. We've seen those kinds of numbers. Um, what if you took that number and instead just went to that country and had an amazing vacation and learned something about the country? Maybe stopped in a few places, asked some lawyers some information, maybe just made some friends or got to know a little bit about the culture so that you could make a more educated guess about where to take the next step or just decide if it's the right thing for you. Do you want to relocate there? You need to spend some time, not go to a retreat. That's not going to help you. You're not going to learn anything about the country from a retreat. You need to spend time in that country instead of being at a retreat so that you can not be around other people who also don't know what they're getting into, who also can't relate to the culture. No, you need to go figure out if that culture works for you. Do that instead. Use those same resources to do something useful. You'll get a lot farther. And then look for people who are actually trying to help you wherever it is you're trying to go. That will give you much better information. Thanks, guys. Remember, live stream this evening. Ask your questions. As always, we don't charge. So just come on and be nice to each other. It's a really novel concept. I'll see you guys this afternoon.